Mailbag Preview Show, episode 280. Uh, we're joined by Rob Scurry and Pistol Pete. How are we going, boys? Pete, it's been a while oh, since you've been on one of these. It's good to good to get a, a late call up, uh, super sub off the bench. Um, yeah. First time I've been asked in, I think, about six weeks or so. So um, nice to have been asked for a change. No, um, I'm, I'm going I'm going well. Uh, we've finally left uh, the doldrums that is Belmont Park in WA. Um, I have been clawing my way through and losing a, a fight against that track, and it's finally getting its first break. I think since May of 2021. So uh, yeah, we've already all of a sudden been able to find a couple of winners at Kalgoorlie, which is good, and then back to Ascot next week, which I think the entire punting population of WA is eagerly awaiting. So. Yeah, WA front, um, positive news there. We've got cracking racing at Flemington. I've spent a bit of time looking at that card, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, my my co-pilot, Lindsay Bowles, has found for for the mm. captain's picks coming up this weekend. We had a, a little bit of a, a disappointing trot in September. We only narrowly lost, really, in the scheme of things. But, um, yeah, geez, we, we copped a couple of bad beats along the way. Anyway, that's racing, isn't it? You, uh, you think you find one that... Is a great price and the odds go off and suddenly it's three wide, no cover and cast. So anyway, trying not to watch them. Indeed. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure Lindsay's got an opinion on the uh, the unraced two-year-olds at, at Flemington. Has he? Definitely. Oh, yeah, he does. All right. Good to hear. Rob, how are you going? Winning day yesterday at the Kinzo? Yeah, first one in good close to 12 months. I've still no close to sort of working out that track. You know, I think there was four leaders that won and, mm. you know, race race four, I was thinking maybe it might be hard to lead and win. So um, still no close to understanding it. Uh, sort of got what I deserved last Saturday. I had a shocking day, Epsom Day. Um, yeah, I came on the preview show all kind of like, you know, whatever you want, this will be easy. You know, it wasn't. It was It was a nightmare. Uh, so much so that I think my old man sent me three tips. Um, I backed two of them, and the one I didn't back won at thirty dollars at Newcastle. So it was a grim, grim day. Yeah. It was just that was a difficult day to review, though. Like I'm just going back through some of the replays, and even just the Epsom. I mean, some of those tempos on the day were completely farcical. You're looking at a big field, and they're just going, you know, below benchmark. It's it's difficult to predict that at the best of times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I had about five five bets in the Epsom, and um, I think closest I got was Democracy Manifest, which was, um, you know, two good cath two weeks in a row on that horse. It looked it looked yeah. superb. Um, you know, I, it it was about my probably my sixth choice in the race, and it's and it's just dumb. I just just couldn't do the cath, but you know, she's flying. You you yeah. would have been happy to see Golden Mile be run down, however. Oh my god, yeah. Y- yard note was yeah, best in yard. Um, and we didn't back it. So that that yeah, I think I'm gonna just toys out of the kite if that I won. Maybe I would have <laughs> yeah, I would have left left the track left the track and maybe got my dad's tip as opposed to you know missing it, which um anyway. Um we move on, race five you want to do first? Exactly. Yeah, uh we'll we'll briefly touch on the preview show tips just tracking there because I had a winner last week and I like to bring it up when when I have done that. Uh, <laughs> I was the only one that found one last yeah, week. So. I, I didn't back it, of course, and it won. You know, back the week before, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. back to me. Back All to I you, Jono. So your your fifty six percent pot. I've jumped to fifty three and a half percent pot, and uh, our fallen comrade Jack Dickens drops below thirty percent. Not sure if that's the reason why he's not here, um, <laughs> but but certainly a possibility. Uh, yes, race five at Rose Hill is the Roman console. Group two, three-year-olds. Few of a uh, few of your old favourites in here, Rob. I see Barber's decided to go this way. I think it was at Flemington as well, but it's now scratched. So um, Mexico's in there. Definitely, definitely a few of yours here. For sure. Um, you know, I could have almost backed Osmosis the other week. It looked really well, but it's you know, R King at that price is is a very very scary thing for me. Um, King's Gambit, big yard watch of a horse. I thought Barber came back better than I thought. I didn't think his run was too bad the other day. This looks a, a tricky race uh, to me. It's a bit of a yard watch. Um, Royal Tribute was short enough last week and seems to be short again, so they probably think that's going to run well. Um, yeah, tricky race. Any opinion, anyone else? Yeah, I, the, the horse you just touched on, Royal Tribute, backed at last start. I thought that win at Hawkesbury was super impressive. It raided through the roof, just whether or not maybe that cooked it in the fast tempo. But it did end up 
starting shorter than osmosis on the day. So, but it did look, I don't know, on the replay, like Tim Clark was struggling to get around at the corner and it sort of laid in a bit and sort of a bit green in its action. So I know your uh, your yard report wasn't super glowing for it, Rob, was it? It was just carrying on a bit on the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it, it just wasn't doing enough. It wasn't professional enough for me. Um, I remember yeah. it. Now, now that you've said all that and you were on for Captain's Peaks, I recall you, you you contacted me after the race and it just, the horse just wouldn't walk in a straight line for more than like three metres. It was just like here and there wanted it. It just, just mine wasn't on the job. Um, so you could pray it a lot better. Like a horse like Mexico, I can't see it running last year, even though it's a big mm. outside, a big outsider. I thought it's run the other day at Flemington was, was pretty good. It was restrained. Um, and you know, he ran fourth, of course, at a big price each way. Um, so yeah, a tricky race. Uh, Osmosis, you know, if it wins this impressively, could go to the uh Everest. Uh, same for King's Gambit, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's he's always been a really sketchy parade at King's Gambit. So if he get puts his mind on the job, maybe he'll be at that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm waiting for your report here. I'd look that that Flemington race behind Aracho or Archo Nacho and I am unstoppable. There's been two runners, two winners already. Um, I think we we both backed Mexico in that race. And I think my immediate comment was that was a half sleep ride. Um King Scambit was okay leading, slow tempo, inconclusive. Uh, you know, first time down the straight, comes back to a possibly if more favorable surrounds. I don't know. We're so, we're making excuses for this guy over and over again, aren't we? After that yeah. first ever performance, um, and he hasn't got anywhere near it since. So, brutally speaking, um, I, I think he, you know, ha- how do you take five dollars about that sort of galloper when you've got um, some other horses that have just as good credentials on their recent figures? I think that's the the query with him. So, yeah, I'll wait to see what uh, your report, uh, your yard report sends through at the later stages. I think. I was sort of siding with King's Gambit. I just thought. With the speed up front, Osmosis and Royal Tribute go at each other again. Um, Kings Gabbard's had a trial since their Archo Nacho run, which, yeah, was fair, but um, ran third in the slipper over this track and distance. Um, he's obviously a, an excitement horse if he if he gets it right. Like as as Rob said, if he uh, if he looks all right in the yard, he'll you know, which he has looked pretty poor in the past. So that's where I'd be leaning. Uh, all right, race six. One of your favourites, Rob. Yeah, there he is, the smile. I, I saw it when I had a little look earlier. Is it? Is it just a bit? I speak of I, cat. Yeah, look, um, very sad. Eleven's uh, out to twenties in the uh, yeah. in the Golden Rose. Um, <laughs> couldn't quite get there. Um, itchy fingers. Uh, he's off. I see. Um, young Dylan Gibbons, and they put Brett Preble back on, which is you know it doesn't thrill me. Um, even money, you know, that it's very well weighted. It paraded the best it's ever has last start. If it holds, I think it should be winning. And it's my bet of the day. I'm taking evens again, which is not my go usually, but you know, um, yeah, it's it's for me. Little pumpers, you know, a horse with with a bit ability will, will be racing on speed. But I, I just think end end cap from that barrier, it's got options. Um, yeah, it's the one to beat for sure. Yeah, I haven't spent any time on this race, so uh, I'll, I'll be doing a little bit over the next 24 hours. But just on face value, it's not a horse I'm going to be backing at evens. But again, I'm, I can't really look at anything and say, oh, that's the, the main danger. Hmm. The only other one I could be considered betting is is down the bottom, number 13, uh, towards the bottom with Tyler Schiller on, um, hmm. Macarena. Uh, it's run the other day to win. They don't often win when they run like that. Um, she's a progressive filly, I think. And um, yeah, maybe I'll have to back it um, before this goes out because I think it will come in. It's drawn well with one of the most informed jockeys on and it can only run well. Form yeah. seems to be holding up around it as well so far. Yeah, 100%. 100% you know, that that loss race with Nadal, um, mm. yeah, it, it's, it had no right to win the other day, I thought. You know, when a jockey kind of schnicks, and then goes, oh, that's a bad idea. I'm going to be last and three wide. I'm going to go, you know, forward and be OSL now. I've made that decision and it's still won. So yeah. um, I think it's gone from Zach Lloyd maybe to Tyler Schiller. Um, yeah. Yeah, as I said, huge, huge rap for Tyler Schiller. So I think I'll have to send that um, and probably be a, 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 
yeah, well, exact are in the race, I'd say for us. But, um, anyway, we'll see how she goes, but she's been improving every start and, um, yeah, as I said, progressive. Like it. All right, race seven is the 1900 metre Petaluma Hill Stakes. Um, did we want to briefly touch on that? You got the likes of Montefilia hinged. Not really, mate. Um, these are a lot of exposed horses that aren't much good. Um, thought protagonist pr- paraded pretty poorly when I last saw it. Um, Luncey's, you know, we don't really want me going through it. Hinge seems to be a big, a big price to me here. Um, we had a bit of rain. Um, there's currently a six the track, so uh, you know, this is a bit better suited here. I, th- I thought if you could give it a run or two, it's been running against the best, it's, it's dropping back. Um, in Montefilia, I don't know, you know, maybe maybe she should go back to David Payne because she, she hasn't been performing with Uncle Chris. What did happen to Hinged in the in the seven stakes? 30, 30 uh, lengths. I can't even click what happened. Uh I can't remember. It, that was that was that was against um male think about it, not think about it, think, think, it, think it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, think it over. Um no idea. Firmish track that day. Um forgive a good horse one run. Mm, indeed. Big price. Pete, happy to glance over that one. Uh yeah, no, no, no interest for me. <laughs> These are the sort of races where I think you have to do all the replays, and I'm not going to do all the replays. Fair enough. And race eight, the Alan Brown stakes over 1400 looks Ooh. a bit like that as well. Uh, <laughs> although a couple of yours in there, Rob. Stockman returns. Uh yeah, did he, Jack he, scratches from just folks race at Flemington to to come here. Uh, Waterford, Cepheus, those sort of horses. Any, um, mate, it, it's it looks pretty tricky. Like Argent Argentia was well back, you know, off the old SP profile. Jack Dickens, he'd probably like that one. Um, but yeah, looks looks a very tr- tricky race. A few of these horses prefer softer tracks. I think I fell into Skyman last start. He does look like a sort of a, a top horse. Cepheus paraded very well and won. He could win again. Um, Roots, um, you know, Uncle Chris at Rose Hill seem to be drawn well. It's it's some sort of chance, but that looks a very, very tough race. Yeah, agree. We'll quickly get over that one as well. And finally, the Niverson Group 3, 1200 for Mears. What are we looking at here? Uh, wide open again, isn't it? Look, Paracel hasn't done much wrong. Um, it's paraded, parading very well. Who beat it the other day in Melbourne? Something so good, maybe a good horse beat it. Um, in a dead Yeah, yeah, yeah. It that was, um, in a yeah. Well, who is a little bit disappointing the next start? Maybe I don't know, but yeah, look, I think Paracel, obviously the one to beat it. It is favourite. Um, other than that, you know, I'll be interested how Russian conquest comes comes back. Queen of the Ball's been very consistent, but it's never a horse I like. Uh, the disgusting, not to be named, um, Kira McAvoy Road, Banana Queen. She looked really good <laughs> last Saturday. Um, she looks like a yeah, she looks like a proper BM hundred kind of mare, and that's the reason why I've been betting her in 70, 75s and you know listed rubbish races. So she could continue to improve. Um, but yeah, if if if, she, if I'm on her looking to get out, um, you can probably tear up your ticket. Um, she hasn't done any good for me at all. Royal Merchant seems to be a very consistent, good horse. First up, I'll be interested to have a look at it. I've, I haven't seen it since I think Goodwood went at one. What about uh, Magic Time coming from uh, Victoria? Um, oh it- yes, 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 I remember. At Caulfield, which obviously S4 ran second uh, quite nicely to Imperatriz, um, but also uh, Magic Time beat home Parasal, Parasal back in April. Uh, yeah, I think I had a big bet on Opal Ridge that day, who turns out, despite winning on a heavy nine or ten by six lengths, doesn't like a wet track. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was a big bet that day. She, was, she looked um, athletic. Um, nice, nice horse with with another preparation. You know she could continue to improve, and you're saying she's run well first up. So, you know she's she's you know her and Paracel seems to be the the fresh blood here a little bit. Um, Wollonga Beast, I'm not sure she's much good, and she probably does need a wet track. Um, but yeah, 
Paracel, Magic Time, probably the two. The other tick for Magic Times, Nash Rawilla, 25 from his last 100. He is flying. Yeah. Pete, Very any good. opinion on that race? Yeah, I haven't looked at this race. It did sort of flag as one that I might have a bit of interest in, but uh, I want to get real stuck into some of these replays and try and line some of these figures up. So I'll, I'll hold for life for now. All right, cool. Let's move across then to Flemington. Um Pete, did you was there a certain race you wanted to kick off with that you've looked at in depth, or should we just get into the group twos? Yeah, I, I've looked through races five through nine. So you can take your pick out of those. Let's go straight for race five then. Which yeah. is the Dane Hill Stakes, eleven hundred meters group two for three year olds. Rob, again, you'll be able to come in here. Uh, there's a couple of uh Sydney Siders, Libertad. Uh, Don Corleone, Cigar Flick, um, that you'll be familiar with. What were you thinking here, Pete? Yeah, I'm just trying to get the speed map and who's actually going to lead this race, I think is probably the most intriguing part because it doesn't look to be really any speed at all. I think you're looking at Cigar Flick, Treasure Way, Libertad, Honor Galore as your leading brigade. And I don't think any of them are necessarily going to be wanting to take it up. So likely slow tempo. Quite often these Flemington straight races, you just have to be posied up in the first couple or just behind them to, to be able to strike. Uh, looking at that Archo Nacho, I am unstoppable race. I am unstoppable as the flashing light there. Last start, I think Zach Spain probably was just out muscled and uh, outridden by Ben Mellon. It was on Archo Nacho. Um, and then you also had Kandinsky abstract in that same race. It was just basically never in it given the tempo up front and got right back towards last. So the, where they settle and run, and where they try and make their runs from, I think is just going to be the key part here. Stretton Angel is the one that I think is probably going to attract a fair bit of attention. I, I think in terms of point-to-point -point speed and the best turn of foot, it's possibly got the best established figures, um, namely from Morfittville. And look, you can make a case that Jamie Carr was possibly half a little bit asleep there in the straight, um, their first start, and just didn't quite get the, the timing right on the horse. And, arguably should have won there. So I think that's the horse that's got a little bit of that different form line coming through. Slightly bigger price than Nacho Nacho and I'm unstoppable. That that might be the slight favour there. But at the same time, you're looking at horses like Libertad Robin and, and uh, Cigar Fleet, you know, some of these horses that are having their first time down the straight, they're just complete X-factor horses. So I'm not sure if you've got an opinion on which one of those might be a nice one to keep an eye on. Look. And look, I wouldn't throw out Don Corleone, but you know, you're telling me it's going to be a slowly run, messy down the mm. straight. You know, it's going to be one of these races where they're all going to be looking for cover behind each other, and horses are going to be throwing their heads around. It's it's going to be uh, awful, I reckon. But but Libertad's uh, it, it's when it won at Rose Hill, I think first up, it it didn't look ready to me. I think it continued to improve. Scarflick, she's only little. Um, she does have a great, you know, I think she's got some good sectionals there. I remember someone saying um, Kadinsky abstracts a lovely little thing, but I think, you know, 1100 is too short. This setup doesn't, so I can't really help you. I can't really imagine having a bet unless Jacko gets really, really keen from the yard. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd be looking for something to improve significantly on looks before jumping in as well. No, Jack Dickens here at his best bet, Stratton Angel. Uh, when that ran a couple of weeks ago down the street, mm. pretty keen on it. And yeah, also thought Jamie Cow was a bit quiet on it. Um, so Damien Lane gets yeah. to Damien Lane. Yeah. I, I still thought it was 13 runs. Sorry, Rob. I still thought it was disappointing uh, that day, Stratton Angel. I thought, you know, for, for what, what you know, because I backed it because uh, it was Jack's bets of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought I was, I was expecting it to, to close off a bit better than it did. Yeah, it's it's one of those where it's just a fascinating sectional breakdown looking at its three career starts. So it's had two starts in Morfordville, even tempo race, very slow tempo race, big splits on the way home, meant to fast tempo race first up at Flemington. It's never encountered anything like that before. It's gone six lengths faster than it has to the 600 than it has in any other start. So, yeah, it's all this really strange you know, set up profile. Maybe it doesn't want to fast tempo. Maybe it's only going to be equipped on the slower ones, in which case it might improve out of sight. Just uh, I found it interesting that Damien Lane's only had 13 rides for the Stokes yard um, in his career. So interesting jockey booking. 
Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think I think what you said there suggests that it, it's it's you know maybe and the fact that Dicko was on it as the best of the day, it, it might be. <laughs> the one. Yeah. Um, but yes, it seems to get that slow tempo um, here. I, I'm going to anticipate that Jack Dickens is going to say that is his best of the day at yeah. Flemington. So we'll, we'll log that as Jack's best. Stratton Angel is following up. Perfect. We'll move on to race <laughs> six, which is the Rose of Kingston Stakes. Uh, Princess Grace comes out of the good weight for age races, uh, back to Mears grade. J Mac rides. Um, How good it? is it, Rob? This, this feels like narrative to me. It's coming out of, you know, the weight for age races, back to Mears grade. It should just be, you know, it's one of those ones where like ratings perps just start fiddling with themselves. <laughs> um it doesn't need to be much in the race though you know it's it seems to be uh you know oh, I'm, of- I'm, yeah i mean look Jono, this is this is the race where we have to ask you how good is skew with because looking at the form this thing has proper kiwi form there's dragon leap legato we've seen them in in australia obviously uh going back through some of its earlier runs like a lot of that form there's winners and winners and group one and it's you know, Walker and uh, and Opie, you know, Opie's not coming over here for a holiday. Um, it, it looks like the one that has all the potential here. Yeah, it's definitely a good horse. And I think it's improved this prep as well. Uh, I mean, this this time in as a, as a four-year-old, as a three-year-old, it was pretty handy, like you said. Yeah, placings behind Legato, who's, you know, probably our best. Um, or behind Imperators. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, and then yeah, bet Legato home or bet Legato had a bit of bad luck. Um, bet bet at home in the Tarzino, which was the group one, fourteen hundred. So any any rain about wouldn't uh wouldn't take away from its chances either. And like you said, yeah, Opie won't be there for fun. So um the yeah. drop looks tricky. That's probably the the sticky part. Yeah. So I thought that as well. I reckon I mean it's got tactical speed, obviously, yeah. but it's a versatile runner. I think midfield three wide with cover. There does look like there'll be a three wide line here. And I think just going back through the historical numbers here for Flemington Rail, nine metres, it's not a rail position where you want to be bundled up on the rail. In fact, not many runners have actually settled there and won, um, especially, you know, going around the, the circle I'm talking about here. So there should be a decent enough speed up front. You know, Rodo Arataki, Starlight Scope, Jaja, Chabugi, uh, Climbing Star, they're all sort of sitting there. Osbred Flirt. Probably forward of midfield, but maybe three wide. Princess Grace, I think they probably just put in the slot, you know, forward of midfield with cover. But Skew If looks like it's going to be able to just sit midfield in the three wide line and access the better lanes in the straight. So if the Flemington track plays to as expectations, and I've got it with six of 47, set 47 races between 1200 and 1800 meters. So it, over the basically not around the uh, not down the straight, just purely twelve hundred and one. That should be forty-seven races, six winners, rails and run. So for me, it's a one position. I'm pretty happy to have something on it because it looks like one of these horses. You know, White Caddo Studs colours have um, have obviously brought across a couple of good horses over the over the years, but it looks like one that the market might be underestimating. Princess Grace, yeah, okay, like not in the best ground last start. Comes out of weight for age, right favourite, but you know what? Dollar sixty. Yeah, you're going to get better dollar sixty shots watching the footy in the yeah, rugby. So, I like what you said. I didn't see skew with there. I looked at the fields, but yeah, it's um, you know by the right stallion to in Zava Beal. Yeah. Um, just looks like you know it's it's better than most of these. Um, Princess Grace with J Mac will probably get every chance, but. You know, if if that has to, if he gets trapped behind slow horses, um, and the other one's building momentum out wide, it, it, you know, it, it, it could be close. Yeah. So Kiwi dominated either J Mac and Waller, or Walker. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're the doing. thing about Princess <laughs> Grace is, at as as you just alluded to, dollar sixty, you're gonna get better footy bets. This 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 is not a leader. It's it's gonna it's gonna need a little bit of luck, and at this price, it that they, they long term, that's probably a bad bet at this price. Yep. All right, perfect. Uh, let's move on to. Do we want to look at the Bart Cummings, Rob? Speaking of narrative races, yeah, yeah. 
Is this a, I'm, having, I'm having my first look at it now. Uh, Atabaskin oh. seems to be well in the market. Um, it's in career best film, sh- shooting for a three in a row. Wouldn't surprise me if it ran well again. Um, but you know, God, where, where, where's the, where's the, the shipper? Where, where's, where's the, well, who's this future history with um, Craig Williams on? Um, first run Australia. Yeah, no, it's just I think no, it's had a it's had a few. Okay. Um, I was is. doing much the same, Rob. Like going through, it's had four starts in Australia. Um, yep. So you're trying to line up all these former internationals, and you know how good are they, and who's going to be suited at the distance and likes the track. And to be honest, there's probably what one. There's about nine of them that have recorded a figure at Flemington over the 2,500 so far that would be good enough to win this. And then you've got other ones, like as you threw out um, Arthur Baskin, who's having, I think, his first crack at at the track. It's just, uh, yeah, it looks gross. This looks horrible. But way, way too hard. Someone's going to be really happy at the end of the day. Don't get me wrong, but, like, yeah. Your time's better spent elsewhere. Let's just quickly uh, slide, <laughs> slide over that then. Uh, and move to race eight, which is the group one, the turn yeah. one, 2,000 metres, set weights and penalties. Peter, you're probably best to talk on Romantic Warrior. Where does he yeah. sit on horses I mean, from Hong Kong? I mean, we haven't seen that many sort of travel oh. out to Australia, have we, over the years? And I know, like, obviously he's got all the form around Golden 60, but... You know, Golden 60 could only do what Golden 60 does, and that just keeps winning over and over again. And I, I think the, the issue I had when I was watching the races out of Hong Kong quite often was this, oh, Romantic Warrior, um, just blessed in run. But that's kind of just because it's got a really nice racing style, settles in the first four or so. The horse just seems to go for J-Mac. I mean, he's had three rides on it, and he's just basically gapped fields in the process. And what you can do with this guy is um, his win in the QE2 Cup um, he beat Dubai Honor. And look, that was a slowly run race. And he basically had the drop on them, settled, I think, third or so in running. Dubai Honor was on the fence behind him. He was never going to get past him. But Romantic Warrior did win the, with a leg in the air. And if you took Dubai Honor and put him into this race, what price would he be? And he's probably evens as well. You know, he brained Danimo. He basically ripped apart pretty decent, or as good as we could throw fields at him um, up in Sydney. And you're just looking at this bunch and say, well, who's who's the animo here? Um, and if you compare the time form rating, ratings for international horses, he's got a rating of 127. Uh, next best in the field is Gold Trip with 125, but Gold Trip's drawn horribly and be on track for, for longer distances again. Um, going down to like Sulcombe, who's 119. The other international West Wind Blows is 117. Looks a real sort of on-pace grinder sort of type. Romantic Warriors is going to put himself in the spot. Do you want to take two dollars ten first up when he's going to improve off this? I guess if you want to back him there on Saturday, surely you just back him for the Cox Plate. Yeah, but the only issue there being if if he if he gets beaten, then you you you're holding a ticket at a pretty short yeah. price when you could get a big 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 one on Cox Plate Day. The, the query is going to be his fitness, I guess, for this, isn't he? So, you know, he's only going to improve fitness-wise. And is he going to meet anything on Cox Plate Day that's really going to jump out of the ground and, and challenge him? Mm, don't know. I'm not sure what the field's looking like at this is, stage. Is there much, Is this going to be just like another sort of slowly run 2,000-meter race? Because if it is, he's probably, you know, close to, you know, an odds-on chance, I reckon. Yeah. I they, keep him gonna... pretty, they keep him pretty fit in Hong Kong, you know? They... Yeah, exactly. And and he's just going to follow across some you know West Wind blows and put himself into the first four or five and running. Um, who is you have horses like? Who is this West Wind blows? First uh, he ran second to pole driver when I was at Royal Ascot, and I think that was an eight horse field from memory, and it was yeah. just a real sort of grindy. You know, put these things into the spot, like come around that tight corner in towards a straight, and they just go up and down the spot, and they're grinding away. Yeah. Uh, you know, romantic worry is going to turn a foot. Look, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if if he doesn't perform to expectations, but do you really want to jump in at even money? Jackson has. I saw that come through earlier. He's, he's had a real decent early play. So, um, I, I look, I, I can't 
I can't disagree with that at all. In fact, what I'll probably end up doing this race is playing just some some exactors. So I think the two horses at odds that can run a, a sneaky race are Francesco Gardi, who I think needs tempo, but there's, you know, it might go either way. I think the horse is on track. And the other one is Emissary, who wasn't suited versus the day. Both of those horses look to map reasonably well you know should be able to sit midfield from gates five and gate seven get j car d lane on board um they might be able to run a, a nice race at a price because you've got horses like sulcum drawn gate two now nah, leave me out of that um who else is in the market west wind blows i've already basically put a line through uh Osipenko, mm, you know look probably maps in a similar vein to the two i've just mentioned but i don't know it doesn't really appeal at the price for me i'm not sure what you think of that horse rob but i think there's a nice. couple here that might be better it's a, it's a nice type but you know i'm not sure if he's going to make it as an older horse as a as a stallion as an entire um yeah. what about this right you are it's looked devastating in brisbane um probably needs 2400 yeah look, it does have a figure um previously at flemington over 2000 meters wide gate you know probably will just take his time rolling forward as well you'd think couldn't couldn't the, completely dismiss it. Well, the the two thousand at Flemington is almost one of the best starts in Australia. You, you generally get a you know you get a spot it's like almost a six hundred metre kind of run until you start turning. So yeah, um, you know they should all get their chance. And all things being equal, uh, which they're not in racing as we know, but Romantic Warrior, I'm <clears> I'm coming around to it. Yeah. All right, we're running low on time, so we'll skip race nine unless you've got a quick comment, Pete. Um, I looked at the race when I started it looking and thinking I was going to be, you know, I'm all over Star Patrol. That just brutal tempo from three weeks ago is just a complete unknown. Again, it's a straight race. I don't think they'll go mental up front. I think Jigsaw Snapper will just set an even enough tempo. Star Patrol comes across. Right favourite. Can understand anyone who's backing it. But I'm going to back CS McGeek. McGeek. I don't know. Yes, it is like having Jack on the show. Yeah. Well, that oh, one's... That's a... Would that just mean say, 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 McKink? Say McKink. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about old Su 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 Tory down the straight? Isn't he? Didn't he win a big straight six race at some time? Yeah. I know he hasn't won for a long time. He's a nice looker. Yeah. If he's been I out for he's... a long time, prates well. Yeah, I'd be I... interested. Damien it Lane. feels like this race has a few sort of, you know, retirement sort of horses in it. On the lead, um, it doesn't get it doesn't get twelve hundred. It'll if it if they go like really slow and it can relax, maybe it can do something. Snapper won at fifties last week or something, didn't it? It's, it's hundreds yeah. again. Look, I, I just like the four year old mare coming through. That Coolmore Studs Stakes run behind in secret was excellent. Um, first up behind Benedetta, just had a big gas out over the last two hundred. So I don't think it was dead at the party first up, but proven down the straight midfield with cover. Graham Begg, really like him as a trainer. Mick D goes well for him. Yeah, box ticker, better price. Back that. All right. Uh, race 10 is the Paris Lane Stakes. Just Folk makes his debut for the Mailbag Bloodstock and Gavin Bidgood. Um, he should, yeah, he's, he's ready to go. Um, he'll obviously improve off the first start run. Um, but a juice out of the track suits him. Um, hence why we're going there instead of waiting a week for Caulfield. Um, and he maps really well. So and did know yeah. it's come out, which is which is always nice to see. Uh, one of the favoured runners go to Sydney instead. Um, so really looking forward to that. Did you have any quick comment on that race, Pete? Haven't looked. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, we'll look forward to that. We've got Gorillo. This afternoon, race five at Geelong, also having his debut for Melbourne Bloodstock and Gavin Bedgegood. Uh Yeah, that's pretty much how's it. He, oh, there you go. How's he going to go, Gorilla? Should go well. Again, wet track. It's not as wet as we were hoping, but that's why we sort of decided to run him this week was because that rain was coming. Um, he really likes the wet tracks. Um, he's a nice price, about 10 bucks last time I looked, so definitely worth a small bet. Has drawn wide, probably rolls forward, but there does look a bit of speed as well. So, yeah, he'll, again, we'll learn a lot of him today. Um, but fingers crossed he runs well and we can get a return, uh, what is it, eight days after we purchased him. So, fingers crossed. 
Um, just quickly, my best bet, race two at Matamata. Race two, number four, Tulsi, $4.20 shot, Autumn Sun, Philly. Um, she was really good as a two-year-old um, and good in her first two runs as a three-year-old. Um, gets out to the 1,400, which, which looks really suitable for her. Um, and back onto a good track. At, well, it looks like it's going to be a good track at Matamata as well. I think we'll suit her as well. Um, Rob, what was your best bet again? You did say, was it? Uh, it was going to be end cap, but I, I like Macarena at the price. And we're not doing strike rates, we're just doing pot. So I'm changing it to Macarena. All right. Perfect. Macarena and mine. That's in race by six at Rose Hill. Race six, Rose Hill. And Jack, we were giving him Strid and Angel. That was right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Perfect. Did you want to add one, Pete, or are you happy with, uh, with Strid and Angel for Jack? Uh, this it's magic thing in at Flemington race nine. I think that's the translation. It's magical or it's magic. Huh. He's done some googling. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm. Here for. What, what, watch Pete. You know it, it wins. Pete goes to 150 pot and can never be caught. <laughs> Declare <laughs> thank you and good night. Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, Zoom saying less than a minute, so we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us, boys. Have a good weekend. Thanks,